Good morning. Please be seated. I have the honor of convening the 94th commencement of the University of New Haven. As chair of the Board of Governors, I have the pleasure of welcoming you to this joyous occasion. Today we celebrate the achievements of our graduates and recognize their years of hard work, self-commitment, and self-sacrifice. We also applaud their families and friends for their support and encouragement. Would you please join me in recognizing the New Haven County Firefighters Emerald Society Pipe and Drum and the University's Jazz Combo. If you would please kindly stand is Jonathan Mitsiaris, a music and sound recording major and a member of the class of 2017, leads us in singing leads us in singing our national anthem and Martin O'Connor Jonathan they know you and Martin O'Connor alumnus campus minister and member of the faculty delivers the invocation oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Jonathan. Shakespeare concludes one of his sonnets with the line, Love that well, which thou must leave ere long. Well, today our graduates take leave of what we trust they have loved, their life at the University of New Haven. And so after four years, or five, or more, our graduates gather here in an unfamiliar place sit quietly for a bit, receive their diplomas from President Kaplan, and then walk off this stage to take on the adventures and challenges that await them. And today, each of our graduates, and maybe each one of us, asked the question that another extraordinary poet has given us. It's Mary Oliver who says, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And so it's in that spirit that we offer our prayer. Good and gracious one, the source of all that is true, the giver of purpose and meaning to our world and to each of our lives, bless this day and every day. Open our eyes to the mystery of your presence among us. Help us to grow in our love and service of you and one another. Dear God, bless those who graduate today. May they flourish in their lives and find satisfaction and joy in all that they do. Help them and each one of us to remember that we are all a part of something much larger than any one of us. 
bless all of our students, our faculty, our staff, and all who support our university. Keep us always faithful to your summons to follow your truth, wherever it may lead, because in the end, this will bring us back to you. And we make our prayer this day and every day to a tender and loving God. Amen. We rarely make mistakes at the University of New Haven, but this time we made a big one. We forgot the undergraduate students who are now joining us. <laughs> Welcome. Please be seated. And if anyone else would like to come down and graduate today, we still have some empty seats. Good morning, I'm Steve Kaplan. I'm the president of the University of New Haven. I want to thank Jonathan for his incredibly powerful rendition of the national anthem. and Dr. Marty O'Connor for his powerful words in his invocation. Marty, thank you. Before I make my opening comments, the immediate mistake we just experienced of forgetting a large portion of our class uh, reminds me of an incident I experienced in my first deanship up at Buffalo State College in upstate New York. Everyone in the administration was new, all of the deans, the president, the provost. None of us had done a graduation at that institution. It was very similar. Half the class were undergraduates, half were graduates. We finished the ceremony, we all left, and we realized that some 2,000 graduate students hadn't been recognized. So this was nothing. <laughs> and, and I mention that because the point here is, if I can give you any words of wisdom, don't worry about making mistakes. You're going to make plenty of them. And as long as you learn from them, I make them all day long. Uh, and it's one of the best things, best parts of my job is not making the mistakes, but all the things I learned from making them. So next year, we're going to come in here and not have any students here <laughs> and try that and see how that works. So good morning, class of 2017. I would like to welcome you, your parents, your families, our faculty, staff, friends, alumni, and members of the Board of Governors. I am proud to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates today. They have, some, they have come so far, and it is fitting that we honor their discipline and their commitment. Let me briefly share a few of their stories to illustrate the passion, drive, and creativity of our students who are gathered here today. Esperanza Humphrey graduates today with a degree in history. Is that for her or for history? I was a history major, so I want to know. 
As a student, she interned at the New York Historical Society and was a member of our honors program. An active student leader, she served as president of the university's chapter of the NAACP, which she said showed her that she could, quote, make a difference, that I should never be afraid to step up and stand up. She will pursue a master's degree in American studies at Columbia University. And I should add on a personal note that about two years ago when the nation and universities were dealing with significant challenges around racial tensions and we had many very good and positive constructive gatherings of students, Esperanza and a few of her classmates came up to me and they said, President Kaplan, we know you're very busy, but we need to see you more. We need to have you around more. This is a time when all of us need the president here. It was incredibly good advice. It helped me a lot. So I thank you, Esperanza, and that small group of students that spoke up and told me what I needed to do in those challenging times. Another example of the kinds of students that are graduating today is Nuska Mariana Alvarez, a genetics and biotechnology major who conducted an intensive research project examining the potential of using chloride dioxide in chemotherapy. She later interned at a, at a medical lab at Yale. She is a native of Venezuela and she is applying to a PhD programs in molecular biology and biochemistry and hopes to start her own research lab one day to develop more affordable medical alternatives for countries in need. Jonathan Spiegel, a mechanical engineering major. Whoa! <laughs> what did that cost you, Jonathan? Jonathan Spiegel, a mechanical engineering major, epitomizes the power of creativity and ingenuity. He was one of the first of 200 students nationwide to become a university innovation fellow through a program with Stanford University. He served as an intern at three different companies, and he was part of a group that collaborated for their senior design project with Edgewell, a trailblazing personal care company to create a razor blade durability tester. And this thing is really cool. Jonathan soon will begin pursuing a master's degree in mechanical engineering at Stevens Institute of Technology. His goal is to become a research and development engineer for biomedical applications. And for those of you that are excited about our new innovation center, a new 40,000 square foot, roughly $35 million building, Jonathan was the inspiration, literally the inspiration for our bankers to understand that we needed such a facility. So Jonathan, thanks for your vision on that, on that important project. <laughs> Samantha Mole, a psychology major, <laughs> a psychology major, she served this year as the president of the Undergraduate Student Government Association. She is a graduate of the Honors Program. She served as a diversity peer educator and interned at a children's psychiatric hospital. She, like many of her classmates, says her experiences as a student have completely transformed her as a person. In the fall, she will begin pursuing a master's degree in forensic psychology at George Washington University. Ariel Tang accepts her master's degree in industrial and organizational psychology. She served as a graduate assistant in the university's career development center, helping to organize career fairs, conducting mock interviews, and assisting students with their resumes. She interned with Target, where she will begin her career in her native Montana as an executive team leader in human resources. Would all of these students who were just recognized please stand for our recognition. Congratulations, and congratulations, of course, to all of you. I now will ask our students to please rise and turn to your parents 
spouses, and family members to say thank you to them. A little louder. The louder you yell, the lower your debts will be. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the piece about the debts was a joke. And now I would like all of the faculty and staff in attendance to please stand and be recognized by the audience for their service to this graduating class. At this time, I would like to recognize our four distinguished guests who will be receiving honorary degrees from the University of New Haven, and therefore are honorary members of the class of 2017. Jay Walker, His Highness Ambassador Prince Abdullah Al Saad, Janet J. Jensen, and Louis F. Tagliatella, Jr. I would also like to recognize the chairman of the university's board of governors, Phil Bartels, who you just heard from, along with the other members of the board of governors in attendance, Ani Chukwu, John DiStefano, Eileen Eder, Dolores Enico, and Rob Lee, as well as Niall Davey, who is the president of the University of New Haven's Alumni Association. And finally, I want to recognize someone that if I forget to recognize her, I might not get into the house this evening, my own wife, Anna Schweitzer Kaplan, who works so tirelessly behind the scenes in support of all of our students and has, in fact, been a student at the university and now is taking art classes in Lyme and at some point will be in this audience with graduating students. Anna thank you for all you do for the university. And finally, I want to say a few words about the real heroes in our story. The more than 57,000 individuals who have graduated from this university over the past century. This university has grown since 1920 from a local two-year college with a graduating class of 12 men and women, 12 to a global comprehensive university which today will graduate a highly diverse class of 715 women and 710 men. And yet, despite this dramatic growth, we still have much in common with that little college founded on the Yale campus almost 100 years ago. A University of New Haven education has always been informed by the belief that, to paraphrase the words of the late educator Ernst Boyer, the crisis of our time is not a lack of technical competence, but the disastrous divorce of competence from conscience. We have, throughout our history as a university, aspired to produce well-rounded men and women who are able to transform what they learned into innovative and socially responsible approaches to their careers. In this way, this university has, for almost a century, stimulated significant economic growth throughout this region and in more recent decades across the globe while simultaneously improving lives. Our graduates have helped create tens of thousands of jobs and, more importantly, through their scientific and engineering innovations, and through their work in public safety, they have saved countless lives. They have, in short, helped transform the world in which they live. In an economy in which the majority of our students will eventually work in fields that do not currently exist, the balance the University of New Haven offers 
between a professional and a liberal arts education and our emphasis on experiential based learning are becoming increasingly more vital. Those of you graduating today now become representatives of this great university within the powerful context of the proud history I just briefly described. I am hopeful that each and every one of you will help make this a more perfect world than the one we are giving you. I now have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Jay Walker. Mr. Walker is one of America's best known business inventors and entrepreneurs. He has founded multiple successful startup companies that today serve more than 100 million customers in 15 different industries. He serves as the executive chairman of Walker Innovation, a public company that owns and seeks to commercialize, license, and enforce the unique portfolio of intellectual property developed by Mr. Walker, who is the world's 10th most patented living inventor and a named inventor on more than 650 US and international patents. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome our commencement speaker of this morning, Jay Walker. Well, with that introduction, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, President Kaplan, uh, Chairman Bartels, members of the faculty, uh, Board of Governors, parents, families, my fellow honorees, I know all of you join me in congratulating the class of 2017. So, congratulations to all of you. I want to say thank you for this wonderful recognition. I'm getting an honorary doctor of business administration, which is an odd choice because I was a terrible student. I dropped out of college in the classic entrepreneur's tradition for a year and a half, never intending to go back. But of course, I did. Sometimes I think I'm best known as the person who persuaded William Shatner to do television commercials for a small internet startup I created called Priceline.com. So the customers in the audience, thank you for being my customer. Graduates, you've just spent four years where the standard question for the past four years was not where are you from or what's your sign. The question has always been, what's your major? You've probably heard it a thousand times in the last four or five years. And now that you've graduated, or about to graduate from the University of New Haven, let me ask you the next big question. It's going to define what you're going to do for the next 30 or 40 years. What are you going to major in for the rest of your life? As you move into the workforce or into service or government or into families, what will be your specialty? What are you going to focus on? What are you going to devote your passion and commitment to? Now, there are a lot of graduates here today, and we've obviously never met. But I have an unusual opinion what every one of you should specialize in. It's a secret that I've learned that I know is true. And people who focus on this life major always get good jobs faster. They get paid more, they get paid much more. Right? People with this life major actually enjoy life more. And they meet more interesting people and they have better lifelong friendships. Here's the secret. You will become what you imagine. From now on, no matter what career path in life you choose, there's one thing I'm sure of, and that is you should major in imagination. Because when you combine the craft of imagination with the two most important attitudes in life, determination and passion, the results are going to astound you. Imagination is the most important, the most valuable, most useful, everyday intellectual tool you can possess. And chances are you never took a course on it. In fact, chances are they don't teach it here at UNH or any school. But it's a value that runs through this school. 
and it's in every class, it's been implied or between the lines. So today I just want to talk for a few minutes and make it explicit. Why? Because I believe that imagination is the critical tool you're going to need for the next 50 years. Here's why. It's like learning to read and write. Once you learn how to imagine and you nurture it, it changes the story of your life. And I'm going to talk about that story in a minute, but first, here are some of the common sense reasons that you want to develop, practice, and use your imagination every day of your life. First of all, imagination is liberating. Imagination lets you go anywhere. It lets you do anything. It lets you put yourself in anyone's shoes. You can persuade others. You can inspire. You can lift your gloom. You can fire up your courage. Imagination is profitable. Every new product, every new service, every way to create value, it actually starts with one person's imagination. Imagine that everything we have or see was somebody's imagination. This room, somebody's imagination. This microphone, somebody's imagination. Imagination is how the world moves forward. When you meet your future spouse or partner, it's all about imagining your life together. If you decide to have a family, you imagine it first. A change in jobs, a place to live, starts in your imagination. Imagination starts everything. It's also fun. Imagination is what makes us smile and laugh. Every joke we hear, it's typically an exercise in our imaginations being tricked by the joke. We imagine one thing, the punchline comes in and surprises us. Thinking up new ideas, even things you never tell anyone else, is fun. But imagination is really about the story of our lives. It's the inner story we tell ourselves about where we're going, why we do things, what we really want for ourselves and those we love. Imagination is the lifeblood of all stories, and stories are the most powerful thing in the world. That's why the Bible is filled with stories. The idea of America is a story. Personal freedom, democracy, limited government, personal responsibility, land of opportunity, the American dream, these are the stories of our nation. When you die, the eulogy at your funeral will be a story. Stories are so important that at my company, I actually invented a job. It's called the Chief Storytelling Officer. Let me explain why my company needs one, okay? I run an invention laboratory. I invent things. It's what I do. And when you invent things like Priceline, which are new ideas, new ways to do I think things, you can't sell ideas. You've actually got to turn those ideas into benefits that people and companies want. And since those benefits are new, you can't prove them. So we tell stories about them. Stories that are so good that people accept the story as proof that the ideas are worth investing in or worth buying. And so we have a chief storytelling officer. You are your own chief storytelling officer. Your mom used to do the job, but now it's to you. Okay? Who wants to hire your ideas? Who wants to marry you? Who wants to take a chance with you? You get to write your own story. Even though the world is going to throw all kinds of things at you that you don't control, you get to choose the story of how you respond, of how you feel, of how you adapt. Your story is your internal narrative. It runs in your head all the time. I am a musician. I am an artist. I am a helper. I am a loving spouse. I'm a father. I'm a good person. I'm generous. I'm curious. I'm honest. I'm hardworking. I'm tough. I'm resourceful. I'm afraid. I'm brave. These aren't facts. These are stories we tell ourselves. The way you write the story of your life is with imagination. Okay, so let's get to the really important question. If imagination is going to be the most important factor in your life, what is imagination? 
Imagination is the ability to conceive what does not exist. And it starts with some very simple questions. What if? How about? Why can't we? Once that imagination is applied in a specific field, we call it creativity. And if it has novel, useful elements, we call it innovation. So that's the three-step chain. Imagination leads to creativity, which fosters innovation. Imagination is what makes you human. It's the uniquely human trait to tell stories and to project ourselves into the future. Not just one future, but an infinite number of possible futures. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter books, understood that imagination also gives us empathy. Here's what she said. Unlike any creature on this planet, humans can learn and understand without having experienced. They can think themselves into other people's places. I would add, only human beings dream of potential tomorrows and then take steps to make them real. So the question is, how are you going to use your imagination? The first answer, get committed to it. Imagination is like a muscle. If you, you can't ignore it. If you ignore it, it atrophies. But if you exercise your imagination, it grows. If we fail to cultivate it in every individual, in every field, on every level, then we're wasting one of the great resources that you have. Look for intriguing problems. Learn all you can about those problems, because the more you learn about it, the more you can imagine. And listen to that inner voice when it comes to imagination. Masaya Nakamura, the man whose company essentially launched video games, recommended that each of us actually set aside a couple of minutes every day to go by, our, by ourselves and to listen in silence. Thomas Edison said the same thing, so did IBM's Thomas Watson, which is why IBM's logo was a single word for almost 100 years. Think. That was the whole logo for the company. If you want to make the best use of your imagination, follow Einstein's example. Don't be afraid to ask childlike questions. What if? How come? Why can't we? Dreaming is about the vision of seeing what isn't there. One of the first airline pilots at the dawn of aviation, the author of a classic children's story, The Little Prince, once said, a rock pile stops becoming a rock pile the moment a single man or woman thinks about it in his or her mind as a cathedral, not a pile of rocks. Another way to use your imagination is to live in your vision. After you've got a vision, live in it. Keep it alive. Keep it that dream going. Keep imagining. And that might sound sort of airy-fairy, but it's actually the most down-to-earth pragmatic advice you can follow. How do I know? The toughest member of the U.S. Armed Forces are the Navy SEALs. And here's what they're taught. Navy SEALs are taught to, quote, living in your vision. And they do it in a physical way. Here's what they do. They stand in freezing cold water on, in an ocean, up to their chests, they hold a heavy rifle over their heads for hour after hour in the cold water. These are the Navy SEALs. Meanwhile, their instructors walk up and down the beach and they scream at them. Sounds like the SEALs, right? And they say, here's what they say. Don't just wish that you were warm and dry sometime in the future. See yourself as being there next to a crackling fire, all hot and toasty, right now. He's screaming to imagine being warm now. They yell, don't tell yourself that your arms are getting tired. See yourself bursting with strength. Visualize balloons tied to your rifle, pulling it over your head. One SEAL went through this training, explained, your drill captains are constantly urging to see yourself already on the mountain, already enjoying the benefits. And you know, when you're standing there in 35 degree water with a rifle that weighs 25 pounds over your head, and you start to visualize that fireplace and imagine the warmth and the power coursing through your veins, he said a funny thing starts to happen. The rifle 
doesn't seem so heavy anymore. The water doesn't feel quite so cold. You catch yourself thinking, I can do this. Living in your vision, acting as if your vision were already true, even if you do that small and symbolic, trains your subconscious to find the reality you want. In other words, just like the seal said, we become what we imagine. So now, I imagine you to invite, to think of yourself with a great future. The world is waiting. People with passion and determination and especially imagination are very valuable people, people who are really wanted. And so when the day comes that you're going to enter the work world, you can actually invent your own job or future, and you can hire yourself because this is the best economy in the history of the world to get paid for imagination. You can imagine a life of service to others like many of you are doing. You can imagine new levels of love for family, friends, and for our country. We, the older generation, we imagined every one of you sitting here today when we were in a hospital room 16 or 17 years ago and you showed up. We have faith in you. We pass on to you our imagination for a long and wonderful future. So once again, congratulations graduates, and all of us wish all of you the best of success in the imaginative future. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Remarkable. Great statement, incredible delivery. Powerful, thank you so much. The candidates for honorary degrees will now be presented. Ani? Good morning, graduates. Uh, my name is Ani Chuku. As a member of the Board of Governors of the University, I have the privilege of presenting Jay Walker for an honorary doctorate degree. The citation reads as follows. Jay Walker, extraordinary inventor, trailblazing entrepreneur, pioneer in the internet commerce revolution. You are a world's most patented living inventor, and your life's work truly epitomizes the incredible power of creativity, ingenuity, and innovation. You have been called one of the leading lights of the dot-com boom for founding Priceline, one of the highest flying internet companies. And you continue to apply your remarkable intellect as the founder of Upside, a groundbreaking travel company that uses big data analytics, cloud computing, and a mobile app to create value for your customers. Perhaps though, most impressive is your Walker Library of the history of human imagination, described by Wired Magazine as the most amazing library in the world. You have been lauded as one of the most influential business leaders in the digital age and for changing the competitive landscape of almost every industry in the world. In recognition of being one of the world's most foremost authorities on innovation, the university is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Administration Honoris Causa. Mr. President, Jay Walker has been duly recommended by the Selection Committee to receive an honorary degree from the University of New Haven. I now ask you to bestow upon him the degree of Doctor of Business Administration Honoris Causa. Jay Walker, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the University of New Haven's Board of Governors, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctorate of Business Administration, honoris causa. Congratulations.
All right, Jay, now you can go out and find a real job. I now have the privilege of presenting His Highness, Ambassador Prince Abdullah Al Saud, for an honorary degree. The citation reads as follows. His Highness Ambassador Prince Abdullah Al Saud, gifted engineer, progressive free market advocate, passionate diplomat. You were charged with revitalizing Saudi Arabia's economy. You did just that by founding and serving as the first chairman of the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority. Your commitment led to nearly 2,000 foreign business licenses worth $15 billion being issued. Your visionary leadership coincided with the kingdom's most ambitious period of economic reforms, during which it negotiated ascension to the World Trade Organization and opened parts of its economy to foreign and private investors. In recognition of these remarkable accomplishments, the Financial Times of London named you one of its Personalities of the Year in 2004 for raising your country's business profile so prominently on the world stage. Later, as you served as the, King of, of, as, the, as, you served as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's ninth ambassador to the United States, upon your appointment, you were praised as a clear, honest face for Saudi foreign policy, and you served with distinction. For your efforts, the University of New Haven is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Public Administration, honoris causa. And I should have mentioned that His Highness is also the proud father of a UNH graduate. His Highness Ambassador Prince Abdullah Al Saud, you have been duly recommended to me by the Selection Committee of the University of New Haven's Governing Board to receive an honorary degree. By virtue of the authority vested in me by our Board of Governors, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Public Administration, Honoris Causa, congratulations. to read Mr. Walker's speech, I guess, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind words. To be invited alone would have been uh, enough for me uh, to attend such a joyous occasion. Uh, I thank you all for uh, this great honor. And the honor for me is even um, made much bigger coming from people who take knowledge, acquire knowledge, and give it to our future. And it's the most honorable job. I uh, am very happy to have come here and seen so many graduates um, from all over the world, particularly compatriots of mine. And I'm very happy that uh, for my country as people, this relationship was one of the cornerstone of the relationship, which is getting stronger. One was the discovery of oil and the involvement of American companies about eight decades ago. But really education, because the education system in the United States is actually like 
the majority of the American people, open, direct, uh, flexible, generous, and this is why many of my people came here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Prince Abdullah, for your comments, for your recognition of our students, of our faculty, and of this institution. What I should have also mentioned is this university has an almost 40-year history with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, starting with the oil company Aramco. Through Aramco, we have educated several hundred Saudi students. Uh, then, in more recent years, going back about 20 years ago, we began a program for the royal family. We have educated and granted degrees to, I believe at this point, 47 members of the Saudi royal family. Uh, at this commencement today, there are about 45 Saudi students graduating uh, out of a class at the University of New Haven of well over 350 Saudi Arabian students. So thank you for your presence here today. It's clearly very symbolic in terms of a very long history with your great country, and we're very proud of that history. As a member of the University of New Haven's Board of Directors, I have the pleasure today to present Louis F. Tagliatella, Jr. for an honorary degree. The citation reads as follows. Louis F. Tagliatella, Jr., respected real estate mogul, environmentally responsible builder, generous philanthropist. You took the family-run home building business started by your grandfather more than 100 years ago and multiplied it four times over, providing homes for thousands of Connecticut citizens. In doing so, you have become one of the most respected names in home construction, serving as a leader for more than 50 years with the Home Builders Association of New Haven County. Your commitment to your business ventures goes beyond the bottom, bottom line as evidenced by the fact that Franklin Enterprises owns and operates companies that have earned seven Green Circle Awards from the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection. You and your family have long supported the University of New Haven, and our College of Engineering most deservedly bears your family's name. Your incredible success has, in turn, benefited an enormous number of people. In recognition of your efforts, the University of New Haven is proud to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, honoris causa. Congratulations. Louis F. Tagliatella, Jr., by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Business Administration, honoris causa. Congratulations. John, just quickly, every time I, I see Lou Jr., I think of his father and the discussion with his father, with Lou Sr., about the gift for the Tagliatella College of Engineering. And we went back and forth. I envisioned one level of funding. Lou Sr. envisioned another. We kind of met in the middle. And when I thought we were where we were going to get, I turned to his father and I said, you sure are a tough negotiator. And he said, what do you mean I'm a tough negotiator? You just took all of my money. <laughs> so thank you for all your family has done for this wonderful institution. 
Our Hi, former mayor, John DiStefano. John? As a member of the University of New Haven's Board of Governors, I have the pleasure to present Janet J. Jensen for an honorary degree. The citation reads as follows. As founder of the nonprofit organization Human Investments, you've dedicated your life to traveling the country to support victims of sexual assault, speaking at colleges and universities to instill in students the values of civility and respect. A steadfast supporter of education, you've ensured that low-income students have access to higher learning, providing over the last 20 years more than 300 renewable scholarships, totaling more than $5 million to help them pursue their dreams. You most admirably continue to educate the next generation through the Jensen Project, a social awareness initiative that demonstrates how to live a life centered on showing empathy towards others. Your compassion shines, Janet, in everything you do, as witnessed by the recipients of your generosity and by the countless philanthropic and nonprofit organizations on whose boards you've served. The University of New Haven now joins them in recognizing your commitment by conferring upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Mr. President, Janet J. Jensen has been duly recommended by the Selection Committee to receive an honorary degree from the University of New Haven. I now ask you to bestow upon her the degree of Humane Letters Honoris Causa. Janet Jensen, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the University of New Haven, I am pleased to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Kaplan and the University of New Haven. I am flattered and I'm humbled to receive an honorary degree from New Haven. I'm also grateful for the opportunity to say a few words about the work that I'm doing here at the University of New Haven. As some of you may know, I am a rape survivor. And it wasn't, it was a day that changed my life forever. And it wasn't just that he brutalized me, he stole a part of my life. And 35 years, I can still play the movie in my mind, moment by moment by moment. And I can hear the soundtrack of the birds chirping. And it wasn't just the attacker. It was the police officers and the medical pers personnel who had absolutely no clue how to treat a rape victim. The words they said and the tone they said it to me was, it was incredible. It was devastating. It was a time when rape was rarely reported, much less spoke about. And the first thing I thought of when I was going through it was a lack of empathy and compassion. So it was on that day that I made it my mission I want to change the culture to have empathy and compassion to it. The work I do is focused on young people since 
the lesson, I believe, needs to be learned, needs to be learned early in life. And as we've gone along, we've realized that it's just not sexual assault. It's the other forms of abuse. Harassment, bullying, and hazing. These are all acts that are from a really unfeeling culture. So if we could just counteract that with a little compassion and empathy, we might be able to change the world. I suspect that some of you in the audience know exactly what I'm talking about. Studies show that one out of four women, by the time they are 18 to 32, have been assaulted in some way. I was proud to bring the Jensen Project to the University of New Haven, and I've been absolutely inspired by the results. Dr. Kaplan was a big backer in the beginning, and the faculty is just coming on board at the urging of their students. The students that got involved in the program were absolutely awesome. I had a young woman that came up to me after one of the programs, and she spoke to me and said, you know what? You're a mama bear. I really never thought of myself as a mama bear or anything like that, but I now wear that title proudly. And what was amazing is many times we had more men at the program than women. That's encouraging. The project we're building here at UNH, or the University of New Haven, could be taken to any campus in the country, or the world for that matter. Because the founding principles are universal. Inspiration, courage, and compassion. I'm especially proud of the Stand Up, Speak Up program here, because if we can talk about this subject openly and honestly, once again, we could change the culture. There's clearly a long ways to go, but if we can inspire just only a few young people, just a few, we could and will start a movement. We have to imagine that movement. And when that happens, Dr. Kaplan and all of you here at the University of New Haven can sit back and proudly say, I was here in the beginning. As you leave the university today and its wonderful programs, I ask you to pay this forward, to take some time in your life, a small gesture of compassion will give you huge results. If you want to be happy, be compassionate. Um, if you want to, if you want others to be compassionate, if you want others to be happy, be compassionate. It was a privilege and an honor to be here today. I thank you for letting me take the time to tell you a little bit about the program. Congratulations to the class of 2017 and their family. 
It's been a joy to be here. Yours truly, Mama Bear. Thank you, Jenna, for your powerful comments and more importantly for the incredible work you've been doing over the past year with our students and faculty and staff on sexual assault, sexual harassment, and bullying. It's a remarkable program you've brought to us and we're very proud uh, to be sponsoring it and we're very grateful for your sponsorship. Again, please join me in recognizing all of our honorary degree recipients. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I now have the distinct privilege of acknowledging the graduates of our honors program. Would those graduates please stand at your seats? These students who received a medallion at their college awards ceremony earlier this month were selected on the basis of their scholarship, character, and professional potential. All of them have now completed an honors thesis, a major research project written under the direction of a faculty advisor. Please join me in congratulating this year's Honor Scholars. As provost, I have the privilege of bestowing the awards upon our Hatfield Scholars. The John D. Hatfield Scholars Program was established with the assistance of generous donors in respectful and affectionate, affectionate memory of our late provost and executive vice president, Dr. John Hatfield. Dr. Hatfield's legacy will live on in the contributions he made to the University of New Haven and in the high achieving students awarded scholarships in his honor. I take great pleasure in presenting this year's honorees. Please hold your applause while the students come to center stage. The member of the class of 2017 who is graduating today is Shirley Duong. The member of the class of 2018 is Nathan T. Lanning. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to welcome Samantha Mull, who will offer remarks on behalf of the undergraduate student body. Samantha is president of the undergraduate, well, she was, are you still? Yeah. Uh, another, no. another 45 minutes. Yeah. Is <laughs> the current president of the undergraduate student government association and will be graduating today with a degree in psychology. Samantha? Thank you, President Kaplan, faculty, staff, family, and friends who are here with us today. I would like to give a special thank you to my parents and my sister. Um, you've been my biggest fans um, and always given me more love and support than I could have ever imagined, so thank you very much. It's an honor to speak on behalf of the class of 2017. Today, on the most important day of our lives thus far, we as graduates sit before the parents who raised us, the faculty who taught us, and the friends who inspired us. And with them, we will stand. We will rise to the occasion that is our lives, showing our passions and sharing our talents with the world. We will find the things we love, let some others find their way to us, and fight the good fight. Whether you intend to enter medicine, art, engineering, social sciences, or public service fields, you will continue to be part of a generation so unique and so powerful that we will make our future exactly what we want it to be. 
However, if you ask some other people what they think of our generation, they might not say the same. But if you take anything from my two and a half minutes or the last four years at the University of New Haven, it should be that living up to what others deem to be successful is not success. Success is fighting when you have nothing left. Success is living in a way that gives just as much to the world as you take. Success is not giving a damn when they say we can't do it and then we go ahead and prove them wrong. There's a quote that says almost every successful person begins with two beliefs. The future can be better than the present and I have the power to make it so. And I believe that we will soon find success, not in people's expectations, but within ourselves. We will find the power to make our futures better for ourselves and the world. And that is what our experiences here have taught us. The faculty around us have unprecedented experiences in their fields. The staff care deeply about our future and in educating us and provided us with endless opportunities to get involved and develop our personal, professional, and leadership skills. They have prepared us to be successful in the only way that matters to be successful people, not successful commodities. It is important, it is vital, that we take what we have learned here and decide right now, before we cross this stage, what success will mean to us, as individuals and as a generation. It's a lesson that I have learned here in every experience and that will continue to follow us as we move forward. And it's that nobody achieves anything alone. We must stand as one, as the Charger class of 2017 and resolve to always strive for success, to use failure to our advantage and to show the world just what we have to offer and all that we have learned at the University of New Haven. Thank you to everyone on this stage and everyone here in this crowd that I've had the pleasure of knowing over the last four years. We are all part of something unique, something special, and we will find success no matter where we go. Now let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. And thank you all for all you've done in your leadership role in the last year. It was wonderful working with you. I would now like to welcome our graduate student speaker, Claudine Coley, who is graduating with a master's degree in business administration. Thank you, President Kaplan. Good morning, honored guests, families, and friends, and the graduating class of 2017. I believe this pair of glasses represents our two years of graduate studies. Sharing this fantastic day is a true representation of our strength and a testament to support the, of the support we received. Like these glasses, we learn how to innovate, create, and while serving others, no matter what the obstacles are that we faced. Actions have great influence. And with that in mind, I would like to share with you two experiences. First, my wish to make a positive difference originated with my family. My mom had a profound influence on my life. Mommy taught me to be truthful, kind, industrious, and respectful. But the most important thing she taught me was service. Mommy enjoyed bringing home people in need of help. A warm meal was always available, or at least that what, that's what everyone thought. Being the eldest daughter, Mommy would call and say to me, did you eat your dinner? And I would reply, not yet. I knew that meant we had a visitor, and I was in on the plan. Mommy was selfless, and she gave even when there was nothing to give. She would feed this person, and later we would create a dish for us to eat of whatever it is that we found. I know you have heard about the Jamaican bread and butter. Yes, it is for real. And sometimes it was what we had as substitute for the delicious meal mommy just gave to someone who was in need. Mommy's mantra, 
Always give your best, no less. Second, two years ago, the University of New Haven found a stray, me. After I arrived in the United States to study, I was rejected by a school in Boston. My challenge was to find another school to accept me, or I would have to return home without realizing my dream of completing my master's degree. Likewise, I was very specific about getting into a program that offered experiential learning. Thus, my search narrowed and resulted in many failures. Until one day, after a two-hour bus, public bus ride, I arrived at the University of New Haven. I remembered entering the International Graduate Enrollment Office, where I met the most helpful, caring group of people since I came to this country. The staff made me felt at home and showed me all the programs for which I was eligible, walked me to the other department directors, then placed the amazing call that made my dream of standing here in front of you today a reality. Soon, my University of New Haven family expanded. My professors and other staff members who were committed to helping me succeed in everything I pursued. The service my college family gave went far beyond any compensation they could receive. I could call or text or email any of my professors at any time. As a student, I met with deans. I interacted with directors who helped me to invite a member of the University Board of Governors' wife to be a guest speaker for the Toastmasters Club I started. My university family, they focus on serving students, supported my creativity, and prepared me for success. Finally, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported me. You all have made a positive difference in my life. You have inspired me to ignore the fractures from life challenges, hidden so well by this beautiful gown. Graduates, I am sure if you took a few moments, you will remember at least two stories in which someone made things a little easier for you. Therefore, I challenge you to find what drives you that gut feeling that makes you happy and combine that with service to make a positive difference. Service to others is the rent you pay for room here on earth, said Muhammad Ali. Let's pay for our rooms globally and always give your best, no less. Thank you. Thank you, Claudine, for your remarks. It is now indeed my pleasure to introduce the president of the Alumni Association of the University of New Haven, Niall K. Davey, an assistant attorney general for the state of Connecticut, who received his Master of Arts degree from the university in 1976. Mr. Davey will welcome you to your new and indeed duly earned status as alumni of the University of New Haven. President Kaplan, Chairman Bartels, members of the board, uh, governors, uh, faculty, staff, family and friends, uh, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Walker, Mama Bear, greetings from the Alumni Association for the University of New Haven. To the class of 2017, on behalf of the Alumni Association, it is my distinct privilege to welcome you to the Alumni Association. Well done. By completing your degree requirements, you have joined 57,000 alumni. As you've heard this morning, they are spread worldwide. And what you probably have not focused on 
you are joining a very special community. They are a community that has used their imagination, they have innovated, they have shown compassion, they have changed the world. The world still needs some changing, and you are now receiving a degree which will permit you to join in that activity. We know that you are eagerly awaiting what is in your future. And we know you can make a difference because your education is on a solid foundation. Your foundation was built partly by you and your efforts, your personal efforts, and it was built by prior students who are now alumni, faculty, administrators, and friends of the university who contributed to the university being here, a university which you chose to attend, a university which chose to have you as a student, and which you have now earned your degree requirements. The good news is I think I'm the last speaker before those awards are bestowed. As students, you proudly displayed our, and I mean our, brand name on your sweatshirts, your hoodies, your band uniforms, your baseball caps. From this day forward, our brand will be on more important things, resumes, job applications, graduate school applications. It's now a part of you. We can't tell you where you're going to take that degree because that is up to you. That is up to your imagination. You've heard the cheer before. Once a charger, always a charger. Why? because we know that you've worked incredibly hard, you've been collaborating with other students and faculty, you've been learning, you've been networking, you've been creating meaningful relationships. They will take you far into the future. We know that the Alumni Association and its 57,000 members are ready, willing, and able to support you in your career choices, your passions, and we want to do things that will help you do whatever it is you have the passion to do. How are we going to do that? When are we going to do that? Why are we going to do that? We don't know yet because we haven't the imagination that you have. You have the best control of your life. If you've heard anything from the speakers today, it's that you are joining a special group you can make a difference. You can help keep our traditions going forward. So on behalf of the Alumni Association, I congratulate each of you on earning your degree, best wishes in pursuing your dreams, and I know that you will continue to make us all proud. Go Chargers! Thank you, Niall, and I want to thank each of our speakers, and I want to remind the graduates, kind of give them a takeaway from each of them. Of course, your commencement speaker, Jay Walker, talked about the power of the imagination to help you create uh, your lives. The ambassador reminded you of the importance of the faculty and the role they played in your lives. Janet Jensen conveyed the powerful and important message of compassion. Samantha talked about the, the relationship you have with this university and maintaining it. And then your graduate speaker talked about something equally important, service. Try to maintain each of those words. Compassion, remember the faculty, the imagination, remember this institution, stay connected, remember your faculty, service, and of course, the last message from the Alumni Association, and as the president, I'd be remiss if I didn't emphasize this and make sure you give back. <laughs> Bill? Good. Aww. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. The Provost Dan May will now present the candidates for the academic degrees as a group 
and the president will confer the academic degrees en masse. Once this has been completed, the respective deans will present individual candidates to the president. Would you kindly hold your applause until all the degrees have been awarded to the candidates? Thank you. Mr. President, I now have the honor to present the candidates for academic degrees. Students and soon-to-be graduates, I ask that you rise as we call you by degree in your college affiliation and then remain standing until all the class is standing and then the president will confer the degrees. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Will the candidates for the Master of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Will the candidates for the Master of Science in the Tagliatella College of Engineering please stand? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Science in the Tagliatella College of Engineering please stand? <laughs> and will the candidates for the Associate of Science in the College of Arts and Sciences please stand? These candidates have completed their prescribed courses of study and have been expand, examined and recommended by the faculty. Mr. President, I now ask that you confer on these candidates the respective degrees for which they are qualified. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of the University of New Haven, I hereby confer on each of you the degree for which you have been recommended and admit you to the rights, honors, and responsibilities of educated men and women. Congratulations. <laughs> During the presentation of the diplomas, you might notice that a diploma is being presented to a student by a parent or a family member, uh, in some cases by a board member here on the stage. These are members of the university community this is a university tradition that signifies a unifying of all of our university constituencies. We request that graduates and their families, and this is a very important point, so I'll repeat it, we request that graduates and their families remain in their seats until the ceremony is completed as a show of respect for the achievement of all of those receiving degrees today. Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I have the pleasure of presenting the individual graduate uh, degree candidates for their degrees. The Dean of Arts and Sciences just pointed out that I think I'm supposed to tell you to be seated again. <laughs> but you can stand if you want. Thank you, Lourdes. Christine Lorraine Meyer. Jessalyn Shea Crossman. Kendra Marie Van Valkenburg. Victoria May Benson. Judah Butler. Deshaun Floyd. Carlos Oñate. Venkata Srujan Golamundi. 
Robert W. Sheridan. Michelle Impelizeri. Kimberly N. Johnson. John Moulin. Brittany Ann Kittle. Sean Patrick Keefe. Joseph Anthony Guzzi. Kendra Monet Watkins. Danielle Renee Desjardins. Marisol Gomez Torres. Emma J. L. Ricketts. Azra Omer Basic. Leanne Galella. Melissa Ann Tempio. Kara E. Vanas. Selena Dorothy Whitmore. Taylor Jacob Hillman. Brittany E. Schneppel. Larry B. Page. Soad Borkis. Ranaj Bailey. Beatrice Duvert. Alyssa Janine Wine. Win. Lindsay Worsing. Mohammed bin Turki Al Haydan. Sara Mohammed Al Hidhal. Crystal Michelle Holness. Nicole M. Wiley. Jacqueline M. Vancour. Anne Marie Caporale. Rosangel Medina. Hamsa Suresh. Jennifer M. Defonso. Heather Brockway Howell. Severia A. Drake. Karen Elizabeth Massimano. Julian Alexander Pierce. Jason P. Torres. Sean Michael McGinley. Romana Salim Kasliwala. Hiba Ismail. Rashmi Kulkarni. Alyssa Berthumi. Joseph Magrino. Carrie L. Silva. Yunhui Huang. Evelyn Kritschmar. Shroshi Dutta. Thalia T. Hernandez. Yeah. 
Catherine Foster Roundtree. Jung Chul Cha. Matthew Robin McGuire. Cassidy Truxo. Brooke O'Neill Call. <laughs> J. Y. Patel. Mark Fusco. Jared William Paul. Derek Taylor Records. Jesse J. DeFrancesco. Tessa Tippett. Ariel Leah Tange. Mia Gayette. Lauren Source. And Lu Andrew Leverton. Amanda L. Becker. PM Keshbod. Absolutely. Could we have a round of applause for the graduate degrees in arts and sciences? Mr. President, as Dean of the Tagliatella College of Engineering, I'm pleased to present the graduate degree candidates for conferral of their degrees. Mr. President, <laughs> as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, it is my pleasure to present the individual uh, undergraduate degree candidates for their degrees. I forgot to mention, this is a practice. We expect all of you back here tomorrow for the <laughs> final commencement exercises. We're getting close. Rab Afahed Del Ethel, cum laude. Latifa Abdullah Mas'ad Al Saud, summa cum laude. Al Jawar Abdul Rahman Mas'ad Al Saud, magna cum laude. Al Anud Salman Abdullah Saud, summa cum laude. Lama Ahmed Abdullah Saud, magna cum laude. Floriana Marke Trepcha. Natalia Bialchuk. Monika Yolanda Malchuk. Madison Page Cody. Nicole Kirsten Kamali. Nicole, Jessica Nicole Brott. Kirsten Jean Cornetta. Kaylee Morgan Canali, high honors. Jillian Grace Johnson. Heather Walker, honors. Sandra V. Baglioni. Priscilla Colleen Fisher Tarquino. 
Edelweiss Teresa Rodriguez Valiant. Honors. Natasha Shortridge, honors. Aliza Koreshi, high honors. Rachel, Rachel McConnell. Sarah K. Mariani, honors. Chelsea McIntyre, high honors. Erica Ashley Piatuck. Haley E. Kerbs. Jonathan A. August. Matthew Gallagher, cum laude. Joshua J. Peters. Sean Edward Smith, cum laude. Rachel Ann Keeley. Michael Stephen Lowe. Kelly Christine Mosca, magna cum laude. Erica Robin Noggle. Michelle M. Stevens. Nicole Suzanne Hornline. Shanisha, Shanisha Lee Ross. Demoni Allen Piper. Demoni Allen Piper. Shakoya Dominique Brown, magna cum laude. Kim Kiyu Evelyn, Kim Kia Evelyn Hunter, cum laude. Shade A. King. Kendra A. Key, cum laude. Ma Mazi K. Sinclair. Nari Cuervo, Narai Cuervo. Kelsey A. Palomino. <laughs> Jamila O. Ephelis Jones. Nancy Kaylee, cum laude. Chu Hua Lin. Amanda Marie Badai. Mariana Liang, summa cum laude. Deanna Marie Zimbrowski. Maria Zyla, magna cum laude. Corey Lawrence Wilson. Ezekiel Alvarez Figaro. Marissa Marie Gillia. Carly Faye Morgan Schecht. Danielle Widman. Yeah. 
Sierra Stein. Alyssa Ann Olson. Amanda Marie de Torre. Andrew Robert Wasserman. Andrew. Lindsay Gagliardi. Savannah May Virgili. Kira Lynn Terrell, cum laude. I'm live streaming. Oh, okay. Andy Esborn. <laughs> Zachary Parker Fontanes. <laughs> Alec Matthew Smith, magna cum laude. Kaylin Passeri. <laughs> Ashley Marie Rufino. Hey, nice job. Katie, Eliz uh, Katie Elizabeth D'Alessandro, cum laude. <laughs> Jonathan Everett Mitziaris. <laughs> Amber Jean Girardin, cum laude. Alexandra Levy, cum laude. Carol Simpson, cum laude. Jordan Samantha Gates. Rhiannon Page Ferinetti, summa cum laude. Courtney Autumn Cross Crossgrove, cum laude. Nina Marie Zanino. Nicole Sarah Pierce. Julianne de Genova. <laughs> Alicia Rose Contelmo. Destiny T. Lapointe. Awesome. Brianna Elizabeth Laquare, magna cum laude. Brianna K. Diaz, cum laude. Caitlin Nicole Duncan, cum laude. Nicole Loretta Klein. Jessica Elizabeth Bolanos. Brianna Bissonette. Elisa Leos. Sophia Fisk. Melina Conti. Chelsea Ann Snyder. Marissa Spisak. William Craig Belke. William Sicconi. Brooke Alexandra Martins. Veronica Bitts, cum laude. Jessica Boca. Andrea M. Murphy. Jesse Edelman. Chelsea Witter, cum laude. Stephanie Pauline D'Angelo, cum laude. Sabrina Marie Bubel, summa cum laude. Brett Austin Levine. Shirley Duong, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sarah Haley Burson, summa cum laude.
Angela Matichak, summa cum laude. Stephanie L. Beringer, magna cum laude. Robert Haffler. Madeline A. Bonfilio. Nicholas Kodiecker, cum laude. Bethany Salvati. Gabriella Ferrugamo, magna cum laude. Samantha A. Mall, summa cum laude. Vanessa Lee Sheridan. Danielle Andrea Raffaelli. Samantha Diane Eldbridge. Jessica Brown, magna cum laude. Somehow. Peter Williams Krauss, magna cum laude. Nicholas Benjamin Rabsat. Antoinette C. Solazzo. Corey James Potter, magna cum laude. Diona Bonyai. Michael Daniel Santiana. Jessica Stoyer. John E. Martin III. Johnny Coder, cum laude. Michael Dinoya. Rachel Nieves. Alexandra De Stefano. Jordan Scott Roy, cum laude. Evan Samer. Nicholas Ayot. Rebecca Noel Goger. Robert Joseph Zigo, cum laude. Noah Akili Joel Williams, cum laude. Tyler Shane Jarrett. Amanda Marie McCrea. Victoria R. White. Cassandra Naomi Charles, magna cum laude. Laura E. Lopez. Mary Angelis Sanchez, cum laude. Brianna Kayla Gardner, magna cum laude. Mary Antoinette Cagneso. Colin Robert Davis. Savannah Dominguez. Narly Stefania Simon. Brianna Young. Jenny Francois. <laughs> Esperanza A. Humphrey, cum laude. Austin Philip Rivera. Cassandra M. Prey, cum laude. Ahmed Muhammad Al Ghamdi. Zoe Farrington. Dorothy Polk. Dorothea Polk. <laughs> Alyssa Weddendorf. 
Tyler Elliott Bridgeforth. Robert J. Granoth Jr. Denny Nakanechny. Brandon Richard Kozel. Donald Ray Scott II. Agnel Etienne. Christina Metzler. Oriana Aduane Do. Allison Nicole Rayren, cum laude. Leandre Richards. Danielle Cardone. Caitlin Rose Sahagian. Alexandra Eileen Russell, cum laude. Samantha A. Lindsay. Yeah! <laughs> Courtney Bria Williams, magna cum laude. Dominique Shanae Mosley. <laughs> Ashley Alexandria Lopez, cum laude. Joshua Emil Kent. Carolyn May Harlow. Miranda Lee Scaramosa. Elizabeth Ann Glass. Rachel Ann Sparks. Nyuska Mariana Alvarez, cum laude. Jacob J. Morton. Fallon Fasola. Ellen Maureen Callahan. Rachel Jean Spots. Nikki M. Ayanase. Daniel Sullivan McCourt. Kayla Wickstead Delano. Sarah Marie Grasefo, magna cum laude. Fantian Ni, cum laude. Christina Esposito, summa cum laude. Kristen Farin, magna cum laude. Jonathan Ruiz. Woo! Juliana Lillian Johnson. Lindsay Allen. Crystal Blue Mejias. Caitlin Buchanan Regal. Yeah, Caitlin! Nina Falchevic. That's my best <laughs> Arnel Pierre Louis. Gregory Martin Pease. <laughs> Lamar Lennox Thomas. Jonathan Charles Jagai. Eric Lynch. John Mark Anthony. Jeremy D. Murphy. 
Mitchell T. Whiting, magna cum laude. Lawrence Niskak. Jonathan Tyler Sterling. John William Renner, cum laude. Emma Rosalinda Capstein O'Brien. Emily Elizabeth Albert. Ginny Mariana Gates, summa cum laude. Jessica Catherine Triplett, summa cum laude. Kenneth Paul Calderon. Tayo Ronald Akinmuyi-san. Christaly Martel, cum laude. Christiana Cirillo. Stephanie Lynette Stewart. Fabiana Feliz Sores. Hanna Dubinina, summa cum laude. Haley Denise Dusha. Natalie Compton. Alexander Gilson. Victoria M. Napolitano, magna cum laude. Marco Aurelio Solano. Benjamin P. Schwartz, summa cum laude. Benjamin R. Templeman. <laughs> Hannah Simone Jacobson. Robert Bagels Keenan. Yes. Dylan John Rosser, magna cum laude. <laughs> Miriam Clauda Correa. Congratulations to all of the undergraduate degrees in the College of Arts and Sciences. They played a trick on us deans and we fell for it. <laughs> so I get to do this again. Mr. President, as the Dean of the Tagliatella College of Engineering, I'm pleased to present the graduate degree candidates for their degrees. Abdul Wahab Abul Ghassan. Abhishek Jacksani. Rohit Kashyap Dudilla. Flavin John. Santosh Verma. Vijay Krishna Paridapu. Prabhas Posani. Krishna Khan Kalapaneni.
Hassan Ali Mizra. Or Mirza, sorry. Manoj Kumar Komakula. Safa Saleh Qasim Al Maliki. Ahmed Tariq Jawad Al Amin. Tarun Rav Anila. Chaya Papa Reddy. Juhi Patel. Shrikar Chaganti. Ranadhir Reddy Mitta. Sushil Kumar Donge. Aditya Varma Dandu. Arun Rajiv Vaduri. Ahmed Salim Hanoon. Zaid Hussain Ali. Ammar Al Sama. Sai Patriush Kudravalli. Lakshmi Deepak Gollapalli. Pradeep Reddy Sonti Reddy. Madhavarup Suresh Kumar. Bhavesh Bhai Panchani. Kishan Patel. Mahmud Gandura. Nikhil Puri. Abhik Sarkar. Heather Lee Hamilton. Man Fang Ying. Brandon Marshall. Ying Yang. Lincoln Tsai. Sin Lu. Chu Chow. Suhati Sripati. Madhuri Tata. Rohan Bhandari. Mariam Golbazi. Farazane Rastigari. Madhavi Borra. Rohit Thakur. Srikant Gorentala. Khalid Sami Bukhamsin. Tyler Valalek. Timothy Whitfield. Francis Pelicano. Devin Clark. Yeah. 
سكينة السادة لميا حسان الشيبان غايتري مهتا شري بريا كوردلي أبور جتري أرشت كوجار चंद्रकांत दिडेला अरविंद सुंकरा श्रीनाथ लक्काकुला शॉन लॉलेस कमन जान पलीतो Shri Dari Madala Tenzing Ladum Arun Shri Vasan Sachin Mohan Muhammad Lutfullah Khan <laughs> Mengani Anuradha <laughs> Varsha Reddy Bairi <laughs> Niharika Biravolu <laughs> Anudeep Gottipati Jagadish Muva Deepthi Shri Bandi Dishan Patel I don't need to say Vikas Patel Sanjan Kumar Shailesh Kumar Shah Bhavesh Patel, Bhavesh Kumar Patel, Ganesh Damane, Bini Shah, Chinmay Jani, Amit Paul, Deborah Rowe. Pandurangam Sneha Gujari Tejaswari Uppalapati Muhammad Mujibur Rahman Harisu Bayo Pradeep Chandra Kakarla Rakesh Are Venkata Chintapalli Ravi Shankar Nayanala Ankush Singh Siddhant Rai Sachin Ashoka Yaligar Hemant Swami Swanali Mukhopadhyay Himabindu Manam Avanesh Veeramanchineni Anvesh Akshay Kumar Reddy Vasundara Rao Panchagiri Naveen Dagumali Vasundara 
Muhammad Yasin Sheikh. Saif al Mutairi. Jihad al Zahrani. Ali al Gandhi. Rakan Nafa al Harbi. Maclan Michael Maclan. Yamini Taluri. Ashruta Devarakonda. Vishnu Sai Jammi Gumpala. Parvati Wale. Sri Harsha Pinnam Shetty. Pranav Madhiraju, MBA. And MBA. Suleiman Al Amro. Shashank Vemuri. Sainad Baragada. Shavakant Eram Pritam Ramesh Naik Please join me applause giving applause to the graduate students Mr. President, I'm now pleased to present the undergraduate degree recipients from the Tagliatella College of Engineering for their degrees. Raid Abdullah Al Hilal. Ahmed Abdelaziz Abdelwahid. <laughs> Ali Sultan Al Nama. <laughs> Mutab Muhammad Al Khaldi. <laughs> Salam Hadi Al Khaldi. Muhammad Naif Al Hindi Al Khaldi. Badr Fahid Al Khaldi. Khalid Faisal Al Khaldi. Faisal Rashid Al Khaldi. Mreshid Khalid Al Khaldi. Muhammad Aqil Al Khaldi. Ali Falah Al Khaldi. Omid Arani. Mona Vahid. Mona Vahid. Abdullah Mahmoud Al Masood. Mark Gidetti. Ivan D. Gomez. Ilya 
Elias Ghazal. Elias Ghazal Cum Laude. Zhang Sang Li Magna Cum Laude. Jonathan Matt Fischetto. Joshua Thomas Akawa Cum Laude. Ali Yasser Muhammad Jamal Nuruddin, Cum Laude. Samantha Murray Santos. Bianca Antonella Vasquez. Daniel V. Perucci. Qasim Muhammad al Ajan. Abdullah Salman al Johani. Abdul Aziz Ibrahim Bou Khamsin. Faisal Mish'al Al Utaybi. Al Johani Sultan. Christopher David Zygman. Chris Hill. Brianna Maria Valente, cum laude. Anthony John Detillo, Jr. Jeffrey Banco. Summa Cum Laude, Mechanical Engineering. Danielle Vincente Delegado. Dominic Peragine. Matthew Golata Jr. Austin Thomas Matthews. Shane Patrick Fisher. Zoe Irene Laid. Cassandra L. Champagne, summa cum laude. Joseph Angelo Caruso. Walid Talal Al Harbi. Firas Muhammad Al Dosari. Abdul Aziz Abdullah Al Ghannam. Paul Frederick Pare Jr. Jack Philip Rothstein. That's team. Anthony Robert Master Marino the third. Cum laude. Andrew Jonathan Belanger. Andrew Nicholas Hearn. Nathan Christopher Hennig. Dylan Matthew Ritter Magna Cum Laude.
Adam Richard Patricia. Michael Andrew Mascaralati. Mascaritolo. Andrew Robert Chavaro Jr. Alexander Washburn. Cody Shepard. Theodore Ralph Owen Jr. Micah Antonio Calvert. Jonathan Smith. Roxanne Redwood. Every Jonathan Jackson. Mario Pierre Jr. Connor Christopher Mayad. Jonathan Tyler Spiegel. Cum laude. Ricardo Gomez Taylor. Kasra Fatemi. Donald Sabo the third. Congratulations. Joseph Stephen Ricci. Right. Trevor James Hay Cum Laude. James Edward Hui, cum laude. Colin Ian Weber. Hethel Patel. Tatiana. Dominguez. Nuf Yus sorry. Nuf Yusuf Dosari, cum laude. <laughs> Ahmed Faisal Barashid. Andre Anthony de Carmen, cum laude. Johnny Chang. Jason Patrick Gonzalo Sr. Cum laude. Oscar Zabala, magna cum laude. Ariel Samantha Talismanic. <laughs> Stephanie. Michael Roy. Danielle Williams. Adam Zachary Salafia. Francois Rome. Amanda Patrice McKnight. 
Anika Maria Hacker. Ian T. Schneff. Alec Andulat. Bilden Lenworth Francis. Edmund Jackson Jr. Kevin Clinton Ellis. Joseph Moore Costa Cum Laude. Michael Paul Traz, Jr. Nitesh Kumar. Jeremiah E. Wright. Leighton Lee the Pole. Jeffrey Leader. Juan Martin Asaldeske. Agram El Bashir. Nayef Salagher. Benjamin Mills. Kevin Palmer, magna cum laude. Joe Tong. Esteban Pereira. Kayla O'Brien, cum laude. Rula Marshad Al Awad. Ariana Marie Conti. Eric G. Donfell. Mark Peter Hurdy, summa cum laude. That concludes the Undergraduate College of Engineering. Thank you. We ask that all members, am I on the right page? No. <laughs> I am. Like I said, this is a rehearsal. We're going to get this straight and we're going to bring it all back tomorrow. I've only done this at the University of New Haven. This is my 26th commencement, two a year, 13 years. So sooner or later, we're going to have this down. It's going to be flawless. Before we conclude the ceremony, I want to remind you that all members of the audience should please remain at their places until the last students have left the theater at the conclusion of the recessional. Uh, the recessional is led by the stage party, followed by the students, followed by the audience. Before we conclude, I want to take a moment to thank our staff and volunteers for their outstanding efforts in making this day so special for their, our graduates and their families. An event of this magnitude is not possible without the hard work of many people, and I'm grateful to each and every one of you, especially all of you who have volunteered to staff this ceremony today. In particular, I want to recognize Jill Zamparo and Jennifer Fizikas. Without their tireless efforts over many months, commencement would never be able to run so smoothly. I would also like to thank Jan Tangretti from the Provost's Office for her support, as well as the many faculty, staff, and students
who helped make this such a memorable experience for all of our graduates and their family and friends. And finally, I would like to thank our sign language interpreters who are with us for their fine assistance. Thank you. And now, should be a drum roll, right? There we go. Perfect. Now, graduates, you're going to miss us. Are you sure you want to go through with this? All right. Then as a final act of these ceremonies, to symbolize your passage, your rite of passage, into the community of scholars, please move the tassel on your mortarboard from right to left. All right, that really was a rehearsal. Now, you're going to get one more chance at this. This might be the only time in your life you can celebrate graduating. So one more time. Much better. Congratulations. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2017. And again, please stay in your places until the stage party has processed out, followed by the graduates. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see all of you back on campus soon. Congratulations.